maybe they can take some uh, maybe bearing capacity for that what they were doing is uh, what you can say uh, okay Sir. so they were assuming that it is a fixed space column and if at all there is a soil they will assume some bearing capacity and what they used to do they used to calculate settlement for the particular foundation for the load to be transferred from superstructure with the fixed space assumption okay but in that time sometimes maybe the soil was also in good condition so problem was not much but now day by day we don't have a good bearing strata and if soil is relatively soft obviously interaction between the soil and building must be accounted okay now here you can just see the example uh, i am having a let us say a one denote superstructure and two denotes foundation okay so q1 will be displacements of superstructures and q2 will be vector of displacement for foundations f1 is the external force on superstructure so if is simultaneously solve these equations but you can see it k11 stiffness of superstructure and if we are accounting for uh, substructure in that case we can see that the equivalent super, uh, stiffness of superstructure will be k11 minus k12 times k22 inverse into k21 that means when you are accounting for superstructure obviously uh, when you are accounting for substructure obviously uh, stiffness of superstructure is reducing okay so that is the way we can solve this example maybe we can what you can do is we can uncouple superstructure degrees of freedom and substructure degrees of freedom with this way and we can solve or otherwise maybe what you can do is we can take complete problem uh, that is a, and combine <coughs> problem and you can solve it okay this was just example now we'll go for the analysis of building frames now the actual problem of building frame is Three dimensional in nature, so one can use complete three D analysis by finite element method. We can discretize entire building and the foundation domain. I can say domain because we have to also account for at least some soil in the vicinity of our foundation where its influence is there. Okay, so what we can do is we can discretize superstructure and foundation soil. Uh, in complete 3d elements and we can solve it but as you know that when you are modeling the foundation we have to at least go for 5 to 10d uh, lateral extent even vertical extent also so in that case the number of degrees of freedom may be many more so okay so what we can do is maybe we can think about first we'll discuss about simplified approach and then we'll also go to actual 3d analysis with Couple and uncoupled manner. Okay, so first today's lecture we'll discuss about simplified approach. How we can use it? Uh, what you can do is we can use a beam element uh, having maybe 10 to 10 degrees of freedom. That is three displacement, three rotations, and which beam element can be used to model beam columns and piles? We can use plate elements to model slab and raft. Okay, uh, and spring elements to model the soil. Okay, so in this way, if you model in this manner, that is beam element for pile, beam, and columns, and plate element for slab, and spring element for modeling soil, the the memory requirement is very less, almost one tenth of the actual 3D problem. Maybe you can have just one tenth of the memory uh, requirement, one tenth of the degrees of freedom we are counting here, and we can solve the problem very easily. Okay, obviously there is one. Uh, Good assumption is that we are modeling the soil by Winkler spring. That is, force in spring is proportional to its displacement. And second thing is, these are discrete springs. There is no continuity between the springs. One spring has no effect on the neighboring spring. Okay. So this way we can see that normally we are going for almost one tenth of actual 3D formulation memory requirement and. With this, we can solve more complex problems. Okay. Now we can just see in detail beam elements. Now in this case, uh, what we have done is we assume five degrees of freedom, three uh, rotations, sorry, three displacements along three axes, x, y, z, as u, v, w, 
and rotation about theta x and theta y. So in the present formulation, uh, torsion was neglected, but if you want, we can also account for that. Okay. Now this is the variation of displacements for the beam elements. So U and V are corresponding to bending aspect in X and Y direction. Okay. So in that, this is assuming that it is a element is vertical and Z is axial. Okay. Mainly than for pile, but obviously for uh, if your beam and columns are having different uh, directions, obviously we are multiplying by R transpose K into R, where R corresponding to matrix of direction cosines. Okay. So let's say assume that uh, here we have assumed that originally it is a vertical member. And in that case, U and V are transfer displacement in horizontal plane X and Y direction and W corresponds to axial displacements. Then theta X is rotation about uh, X axis and theta Y rotation about Y axis. Okay. And with this, uh, now we can see that in this case for the beam element, what we can do is we can use curvatures that is as the strength equivalent strength. So that is del 2u by del x del z square, del 2v by del z square are the curvatures about x and y axis. Okay. And uh, del w by del z is axial strain. Okay. Now, stiffness matrix given by the visual formula integral B transpose DB. So, only thing is in this case, integration is over the length of the element L. So, it is DZ. Uh, what we have to do is normally we have to formulate the B matrix with this uh, for curvature and we can work. So, in this case, the D matrix is relation between the curvature and uh, bending moments for first two uh, components and for third, it is the axial stress. Or actual force, rather, okay, you can say. So, EI Y is the spectral agility, EI X is the spectral agility, okay, and EA is the axial stiffness, okay, so that forms our D matrix. So, when we solve it, this problem, we can see this is the terminal matrix. Many of us also have used this in uh, what you can say. Uh, Uh, spectral analysis also 20 i by l cube 60 i by l square and so on so with this um, integration we are getting a normal matrix for 10 by 10 for five degrees of freedom at each node there will be two nodes on the either side now this matrix depending upon the orientation of the member uh, whether it is a vertical or horizontal or incline we have to multiply them with respect to direction cosine that is r transpose K into R. Now for modeling uh, this uh, beams and maybe sorry for modeling modeling slabs and draft, we can use flat element. Okay, so with this uh, we can uh, reduce degrees of freedom basically. So member, so in this case we are considering two effects. One is membrane effect that is the loading in the plane of the plate. In plane loading we count it by membrane effect and then we have one more is the bending effect that is transverse loading. Okay. So for in plane loading or membrane loading, what we consider is we assume that it is a plane stress idealization. That is the transverse stress is not considered here. It is assumed to be zero. And then we say that the principle of superposition is valid. Okay. So membrane effect, uh, what we do is in the first, we assume that it is the fourth node element rectangular element with the four nodes, one, two, three, four, having two degrees of freedom for each node in plane of the plate, that is displacements in X and Y direction. Horizontal displacements, U and V in X and Y direction are the degrees of freedom. Because there will be eight degrees of freedom. And in this case, we can get integral uh, stiffness of this by integral B transpose DB over the area. We can convert them with actual coordinates Theta by assuming that the is equal to x minus xc by a, y is equal to y minus yc by b, where xc and yc are coordinates, xy coordinates of center of the element. And 2a and 2b is the dimension of the element in x and y direction. H is thickness of the plate. 
now in the case of bending effect we consider that it is we uh, assume that it is a, we can assume first spin plate okay so displacement vector consists of 12 degrees of freedom that is uh, each for each node we have 3 degrees of freedom that is transfer displacement w and in rotation theta x and theta y about x and y axis now using this pascal triangle for this 12 degrees of freedom we will mod uh, model this by assuming a polynomial okay in x y uh, coordinates so w is consisting of a polynomial with 12 uh, terms in it one is first three term one is constant term then we have linear term then we have uh, x square x y y square that is uh, quadratic then we have cubical term up to 10th term and then we have fourth order term okay so this is the equation for w so we have to write down similarly for the theta x as and theta y in terms of derivative okay now in the case of similarly as case of beam here also strengths are considered to be the curvatures about x axis y axis and xy okay so we can take as equivalent strengths here curvatures okay three curvatures as and with that we can relate them with the displacement or nodal displacement vector okay so it is written as b into delta it is equal to q into c inverse delta okay uh, then stress strain relationship is relation between the moments and the curvature okay so moments are mx my and mxy and they are given by this b matrix into curvature okay where mu's poisson's ratio is modulus of elasticity for the plate okay then element thickness matrix will be given by again the same formula integral b transpose db dx dy from the limits minus a2 plus a minus b2 plus b if we want we can convert them to minus 1 to plus 1 by substitution in natural coordinates force factor will be given by the second equation here it is equivalent to that c inverse transpose into p transpose b me and transpose okay sir excuse Two me sir hello sorry hello sir actually the dr h s chore is the name is available in all the slides can you remove it sir uh, i don't know how to remove it i was trying it actually <laughs> but okay. uh, uh, let me see how to remove it uh, maybe Okay. Hi, yes, sir. It's not not visible now. Thank you, sir. Okay. So this is the force vector for spin plate. Okay. Now we'll go to the modeling of the soil. Now common practice is uh, the modeling the foundation basically. Uh, now in this case, 
but what we can do is we can model the foundation by again different components maybe as a raft pile and pile group okay and mainly difference will come how you are modeling the soil okay you can model by beam elements again raft or pile cap by plate elements and but how to model the soil will be having a two approach one discrete spring that is giving clutch hypothesis or we can use elastic half space elastic half space is better on only raft is there okay in that case it means uh, maybe more rational but when the case of pile that is not as rational as it is because elastic half space approach ignores the presence of pile this is the waves uh, winkler hypothesis we can see it's modeling we are using it okay so just you have to notice that in this case uh, these are called discrete spring so one spring has no effect on the uh, or no influence on the nearby spring that's why we call it a discrete springs okay uh, so it was try to improve that effect uh, in the, some of the models like this uh, by introducing elastic membrane or introducing the pasternak shear layer also okay anyway so we are but not using it here because in the case of pile we have to only use winkler's model if pile was not there in that case we could have gone for other types of models also to count for continuity between the springs okay in the form of shear layer or in the form of elastic membrane also so that was possible if it was only strapped now soil support simulated by using a series of springs in three directions okay so there will be soil reaction px py pz and they are related with the subgrade modulus okay now if in this case stiffness matrix will be given by integral and transpose d into n where n is matrix for shape functions that is correlating the displacement within the point to the nodal displacements now when you carry out the integration the stiffness matrix for soil is in for given as here this is for kx or ky you can say in respect to it will be same for kz it is different here okay so kx and ky will be given by ks so 4 by 4 matrix where b and c are related to separate modulus on the either ends so esi l by 420 is b and c is the grade ESJ minus ESI in 12 by 840, where ESJ is separate modulus at the node J. Similarly, the axial stiffness offered by soil will be given by the bottom equation. So in the same way, soil supporting the plate elements because raft is resting on the soil, we have to calculate stiffness for that. So that will be given by if we are modeling the membrane effect. It is given by integral n transpose into E matrix into n, and that is in plane loading or membrane effect. And for transverse springs, we have to use the plate element formulation. Okay, so in that case, stiffness support given by soil supporting the plate or raft by this particular equation. now it depends upon whether we have to model it as a thin plate or thick plate in the case of slab it is quite okay if we are modeling a thin plate because normally thickness is uh, quite small okay it is less than b by 10 that is the least dimension of the slab divided by 10 okay but in the case of raft sometimes the raft thickness are quite huge which can go even up to 1 meter to 2 meter also okay so in that case we cannot just neglect it and in that case the, we have to model this as a thick plate the difference between this uh, in the case of thin plate uh, the because it is acting with the bending phenomena mainly uh, it is bending uh, transfer deformations were more critical and in that case rotation of this plate about x and y axis were related to uh, transfer displacement w but in the case of thick plate it is thickness is quite large we have to also account for shear deformations so in this case we cannot just relate rotation of the plate theta x and theta y to transfer displacement w okay so in this case we consider as individual degrees of freedom rather than dependent degrees of freedom in the first case w and theta x and theta y were dependent but uh, in this case thick plate 
W three tags and theta y they are independent degrees of freedom. So we use shape functions to model this, and all shape functions shape functions are same uh, for W three tags theta y, but there is no connectivity between uh, these three degrees of freedom. Okay. Now in this case, what we can do is again we can use same uh, technique based on the Winkler theory because that that is the, that way it is possible for us to deduce uh, degrees of freedom. So in the case of thick plate, our assumptions are deflections are small compared with the thickness of plate. A normal to the middle surface of the undeformed plate remains straight, but not necessarily normal to the middle surface of the deformed plate. And this is where it having a deviation with the thin plate. The dresses normal to middle surface are considered negligible. We have three degrees of freedom, theta x, w theta x, theta y, and they are independent bilinear shape functions are assumed for displacement and rotational degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, if we write down the expression for strain energy by considering the work done, and then what we can do is we can have like differentiate it for minimization. Okay. This is the strain energy. Okay. Due to bending of the plate. And we can account it. Okay. So where H is corresponding because of the shear deformation, dB. Uh, this is um, uh, okay. And dS, and this is the shear strength. Okay. So we can say here is the matrix for shear function. If we are having four four nodes, it will be uh, three by twelve. And then you can write down this corresponding. Uh, rotations and shear deformations okay and then we can have equation for similarly for strain energy uh, developed due to deformation of soil springs will be given by this equation okay and again you can use shape functions for that and we can have a formula for uh, stiffness due to soil. So Kb plus Ks plus Kf. Kb is due to bending, stiffness due to bending of the thick plate, Ks due to shear deformation, and Kf stiffness due to foundation soil. Okay. So these are the final equations for each one. Bending stiffness, stiffness due to shear deformation, stiffness of foundation soil, and this is the force vector we can calculate if we know the transverse load or transfer sentence that will load Q, sorry, transverse load of intensity Q is applied on the plate. Okay. If we want to use elastic half space, that is only possible when there is only raft if its pile is not there. In that case, what we have to do is, uh, we have to calculate the contact pressure between the plate and beam and soil, okay. Uh, the plate and beam is divided into number of reform loaded elements. So we can model this uh, in the same way. Okay, but what we have to do is, in this case, what we do is, uh, we assume that the unknown pressures around this plate and beam in form of P1, P2, and so on. Then what we, we do is, uh, we calculate soil displacement due to unknown pressures P1, P2 by Midland's equation. Mendel's equation will give us, if we are applying a load, let us say Q at a point at depth C, and we want to calculate a displacement at some other point at depth, let us say Z. So in the Mendel's equation, we can find out its displacement due to a load Q. Okay. But now in this case, the load will be our uh, pressure P1 or P2, let us say multiplied by area of the element. But the thing is that since uh, these pressures are unknown to us, we'll calculate in terms of unknown pressure P1. So what we are doing is we are calculating the flexibility coefficients, or rather you can say we are calculating the flexibility matrix. Okay. So if we have vertical uniform pressure Pj acting on the element, then the equivalent load will be area of the element multiplied by Pj. Then the displacement the rho Ij, that is, or element I at depth Z due to equivalent point load QJ at depth C will be given by this Mendel's equation. This is for vertical displacement. Similarly, we have expression for horizontal also in the next slide. Similarly, 
horizontal displacement rho ij for element i at depth z due to equivalent point rho qj at depth c will be given by this equation. So what we can do is we can calculate this flexibility coefficients s i j. Okay. So we'll get that in the matrix formulation as the displacement vector will be equal to s into p where p is vector of pressures which is unknown to us. So what we can do is we can take inverse of flexibility coefficients and we can get different matrix of the soil. But this approach is more suitable for only raft and not for pile because if there are number of piles are there in that case it is not valid actually it is not it, it will be again a very crude assumption because the maintenance equation is applicable for uh, semi infinite homogeneous elastic mass which ignores presence of any foreign material okay so even if we are using it for pile for single piles it is assumed that pile is a very thin elastic strip and again it neglects the shear transfer between the pile and soil. Okay, so method of analysis. So we have assembled thickness matrix for superstructure and soil in global thickness matrix. And we can form the overall equilibrium equations. If we want, we, want, we can apply the boundary conditions uh, and then resulting equations are solved with the cost elimination. So this is possible for this uh, approach simplified approach where we are using beam element, plate element and spring elements. But in the case of actual 3D, it is not possible. There we have to use the active column solver. Okay. So once we calculate uh, this displacement, then we come back to every element to calculate uh, the its forces, that is shear force and bending moment for each element. So what we have to do is we come back to each element again and we just take element difference matrix multiplied by corresponding displacement vector that will give me the values of the force and moment at respective nodes. Here, force and milling moment at respective nodes. Okay. Uh, that is the way we can do it. Uh, one thing is that if suppose say we, we want to go for a uncoupled approach. So in that case, what we can do is uh, we can have a file foundation, but uh, we can represent this file foundation by a uh, stiffness matrix of six by six. Okay. Because at the column base, there will be node will be there and the node between the base of the structure and the soil common node. So what we can do is uh, we can, if there is a pile connected to that node, so what we'll do is uh, we'll try to find out a stiffness equal to this matrix for the pile corresponding to its six degrees of freedom. So what we can do, we can apply unit force effects on the pile in X direction or at the center of pile cap, if it is a pile or pile, a pile group. Okay. And we can find out six displacements at center of pile cap. That is F11, F21. F31 and so on. So one corresponding to X direction, two maybe Y, three maybe Z direction, then four, five, six, maybe rotations. Okay. So we'll repeat this uh, procedure for five more times for uh, applying unit force in Y direction, unit force in vertical direction, unit moment, MX, MY, MZ. Okay. So once you do it, what we'll get is, is this particular matrix. Okay. So we can get six displacements U, V, W, theta, X, theta, Y, theta, Z. Okay, in the form of this flexibility coefficient. So if we take in inverse of this, in that case, we can use this matrix to represent the foundation attached to the node of the <coughs> bottom node, common node between the pile and column or pile group and column, okay, base of the column. So instead of what we do is here in this case, we analyze the pile foundation separately. We find out this equivalent six by six matrix for each particular base of the column. And we can attach it instead of assuming fixed space, we'll apply a, a matrix of six by six. Now, uh, just this is a small example here. Uh, we have done it for, uh, with a simplified approach. We have taken a building of it is G plus two building, okay. Uh, in plan, it was 10 meter by 10 meter. So it was having a each bay of five meter by five meter. 
and the properties of uh, you can say the here assume that it was it is having a beam and columns of equivalent uh, same dimension so these are the properties of beam and column and with this we have found out this uh, what you can say a many moments in the building frame we have done it with the fpm first the particular approach we have discussed so it was done with for first for peak space okay because we want to validate the results uh, we want to check the our applicability of fpm so we have done it with the fpm we have simulated it in the strad also and we also solved it within the kanish method with equivalent free assumption okay and what we get results are here now next step we is do it for uh actual the pile foundations okay so we can see that uh now in this case what we have done this is almost same frame but now we have modeled the foundation with the piles okay so there is a pile at the base of the each column a single pile is there okay and we have solved the same um building frame with piles attached to all the nine columns okay now we can see that new columns are supported on the pile caps in okay each pile cap is 2 meter by 2 meter by 1 meter in size on supported on five vertical piles okay and when we solve it for this so we can compare the two results uh, in this case the modulus of separate reaction of soil was assumed linearly varying with this particular not linearly it is assumed with the particular formulation uh, z to the power 0.67 okay and now these are the comparisons with the two loads case one is only case uh, load there are two load cases load case 1 and load case 2 load case 1 is only dead load and load case 2 is uh, there is wind load is there okay. and we can see this comparison or compare the moment basically we can see here the moment was 3.07 ton meter and it is 4.95 the increase is quite maybe around 50% 7.58 to 6.31 7.12 to 8.04 121.44 so roughly we can say that 2.2 to 3.64 so the increase in the moment is around 40 to 45% because of the a uh, flexible base now we have modeled this uh, not as a rigid base but we have modeled this as is supported on the pile foundations and because of this there is a significant increase in the bending moments okay so this is the change in moments we can see for different uh, particular beams okay you can see here there is 47.9% increase is also there Okay. So maximum change in member end moment for the round forty five percent. The effect of SSI has been observed to be quite significant on the type of foundation used, and the effect can be considered reduced, can be considerably reduced if the structure is supported on a flexible graph or on a group of piles. Okay, as we increase the thickness of the foundation, obviously it is coming closer to fixed base condition. or even if soil is becoming stiffer and stiffer it is coming close to fixed base conditions okay. now we'll go with actual 3d analysis now in this case um because uh, in the first approach the advantage was we have done with very small number of degrees of freedom almost memory requirement was 110 but in this case that case we have to use different elements uh, beam elements for beam and column then interface elements interface element to in this sorry beam element for sand drop and in spring elements for soil and in that case we were considering the inflin uh, membrane effect set between the uh structure and soil wherever wherever, wherever there is a connection between the structure and soil we have to use interface because the behavior of two different materials will be little bit different okay 
so we have to use an interface so that if we not use then there will be absolutely perfect contact and at least on the interface between the two the behavior is given by same uh, formation and there will cannot be any relative displacement between the uh, maybe the structure and corresponding attached soil okay so then this is the equation for the force vector you know as uh, fm is quite simple it is we have to just with the same formula integral b transpose db and similarly for interface elements we are our strengths will be equal to integral uh, relative displacement that is let us say u is displacements in the x direction then u of pile minus u of soil that is relative displacement that is the stra strain for interface element similarly v of pile minus v of soil w of pile minus w of soil so this, there will be these three strains for a given interface element on any point and we can again what we have to do is we have to assume that some displacement function here okay now in this case we have used 20 node elements that means along the each direction there will be three nodes okay means variation is quadratic or parabolic so parabolic variation means our strains will be the first orders derivative of this and that will be uh, function of x y or z so they are not constant they are linearly varying okay so in that case we can use and second order will be but um, constant so second order derivative will be constant so it is assumption is that the bending moment will be constant within the element okay with this curvature is to be constant so there will be constant bending moment along one direction so in the fm it is quite simple you have to just formulate our b matrix with our assumed shape functions and once you do it with the b matrix we have solved the problem almost 50% The rest is quite mechanical procedure. We have we have to write down the D matrix, constitutive matrix, and then find out the product B transpose DB for a particular cos point and repeat it for all the cos points of the element and sum it up. Same thing we can do for interface elements. Interface elements are necessary to model the roughness or finite roughness between the pile and soil or the plate and soil. Not only that. Uh, if there is a gap created because sometimes possible that when pile is moving in one direction there can be gap in on the its reverse side okay so if there is sufficient gap is developed obviously we have to assume that there is no contact between the pile and soil then corresponding interface stiffness can be said to be equal to zero similarly in the case of deformation of plate also sometimes possibly plate can be bent like this and there can be contact can be loose at some points when there is deforming uh, coming above the ground level in that case also we can model the gap between the slab and or shaft and soil force vector will be given by usual expression as q into n transpose dA okay now this was done it for uh, this uh, the first study it was done for a single story building with this particular uh, configuration so, so here Uh, in this case we have done it two analysis one is with uh, we done it with uncoupled way that is we do solve pile foundation separately and then we apply a six by six matrix on the base of the column and in the second one we have taken a complete uh, model we are modeling all the soil and pile also okay so in this case we have tried uh, four configurations of piles a uh, pile group basically that is uh, two piles in series and parallel arrangement two pile in series two pile in parallel you can say two pile in series series means arrangement means where the uh, direction of load is parallel to line joining the piles and uh, par uh, parallel arrangement means direction of loading is perpendicular to line joining piles okay so two pile in series and parallel three pile in series and parallel and the second model where we have modeled this together complete modeling of pile and uh, foundation elements plus surrounding soil so these are the properties of the parameters we have used in the analysis okay 
now we can just compare the displacements here okay so top displacements uh, they are compared here okay please note that uh, Mm, this is in millimeter. Okay, here in this case, uh, the displacement uh, for a fixed base at the top displacement of the top of the building frame was 30 around 30 mm, and you can see that with the uncoupled approach, when we have modeled by the file, the displacements were quite 101 if the spacing is 2D, but as we are increasing the spacing between the two piles. Is coming down to 95 mm, 90 mm, and 86 mm. Okay, so percentage increase was quite huge here. 166 percent increase was there, which coming down to 128. So this was done with uncoupled approach. That means we solve the pile foundation separately and we formulate six by six matrix and that we apply to the base of the column. So in the case of couple, when we model the complete system together, it, of course, it's quite difficult. It, it takes quite time for it, okay? Uh, so in that case, uh, the degrees uh, displacement fit of the order of 85 millimeter, 81 millimeter, 78 and 73 millimeter, okay? So we can see the percentage increase was 124 and come down to 83 at five days spacing. So variation was uh, between the two approaches was in the order of 17 to 19%. Um, then what you can see is uh, uh, if we compare the response uh, between the two procedures, the very range was 34 to 42 percent. Similarly, we can compare the bending moments. Okay, the increase in the bending moment uh, in the bending moments are not increased by much. Okay, so we can see that here it is of the order of. Uh, only 14 to 15 percent when moment was increased by 14 to 15 percent in the case of uh, uncoupled analysis and even couple also it is 13 to 15 percent okay but negative building moment was having a little bit more effect by 27 to 28 okay. percent now in the next study in this case the pile was modeled as a continuum now in this study we model the pile as a sorry soil was modeled as spring and we have used the PY curve uh, described by George Odis, uh, and George Odis in 1992. So George Odis and George Odis has, has given a hyperbolic curve uh, for soft clay piled, uh, uh, for soft clay PY curve in the form of where K is the initial stiffness and P is ultimate soil resistance. Okay. Uh, so we can see that now with this one, uh, with spring approach, the, our analysis is here. So if we use a linear spring only, our displacements were of the order of 75 millimeter, 72, 70, 68. Okay. This is for series arrangement and for parallel it was 77, 75, 74, and 72 millimeter. So we can see that series arrangement was quite steeper because it is assuming for direction of loading basically. No, parallel was assuming stiff, a little bit stiffer, okay, around 77. But if we are going for longer analysis, in that case, our displacements were of the order of 88 millimeter, 81, 77, and 74. Okay, this was for two piles. For three piles, they are coming down to 75, 72. Not much change over here, but here there is a change in longer analysis, 85, 80, 76. 30, 73, okay. Similarly, when we come to the bending moments, okay. So many moments were increased by not maybe 15% and uh, that is for positive bending moments, negative bending moments were increased by around 27 to 28%, okay. So increase in the range of top displacement was 92 to 137%. And the aspect of continuity of soil found to increase the displacement in the range of 8 to 16 percent. Similarly, bending moments were increased by 15 percent at the positive bending moment, and negative bending moments were affected by 27 to 28 percent. 
now that was for g plus uh, building with single story now we analyze a building with g plus 2 here okay now in this case we have used six combinations uh, uh, means four previous combination that is two pile in series and parallel and then we have also used square piles a uh, 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 okay now we can see the fpm mesh here for this uh, all this configurations now there is a common mesh for series and parallel here this is the mesh for two piles in series and parallel for series we apply load in this direction for parallel we apply load in this direction okay same model will be used to find out corresponding thickness 6 by 6 thickness similarly here the three pile in series so this is load is applied in this direction along the line of the piles line joining the piles that will be series and when i applying perpendicular to it In this direction, it will be parallel. Next slide will be having two by two and three by three. Now, in this case, two by two and three by three, we have used symmetry to reduce the uh, size of the matrix. Okay, we have used symmetry. So, in this case, because it was symmetrical about its center line, so what we have done is uh, we have taken this, we have taken the central cut. So. of course we have to apply proper symmetric condition so it is assumed that this particular vertical plane with the plane of symmetry will be always remain vertical okay it it won't deform in perpendicular direction that is y direction if it is x direction y direction here so this plane vertical plane central vertical plane in x x z direction has got no deformation in y direction and that is the boundary condition for symmetry so here we have done it for so only we have to model two pile only now in this case we have to model six pile because uh, central line will pass through center of the three pile so half piles will be there okay so this is a fpm mesh for 3 by 3 it is note that we have modeled the boundaries at 14d apart from the pile cap okay the distance was quite sufficient and now we are comparing the pile configurations uh, this, uh, results of the pile configurations okay uh, <clears throat> now before that say we are using its 6 by 6 matrix for linear analysis it is just quite good enough uh, to find out its uh, displacement we are formulating a 6 by 6 matrix but in the case of linear analysis what we have done is uh, we have found out a low settlement curve for each uh okay that is we apply load in x direction y direction and z direction okay and for this load direction we have uh converted this and we have find out equivalent hyperbola okay so we find out the k max and sort of hu for each load settlement or load displacement curve here for the linear analysis and then we apply the load in increments for which may be divided the load in 10 increments and we have done it for each one so we formulate first uh, the load displacement relationship for x y and z direction then we analyze it to set a hyperbolic relation and then we get hyperbolic relation then we calculate the relation that is uh, maybe tangent for each load increment so depending upon the displacement we have to find out its uh dq by dx or dq by d whatever it is x y z direction the road okay and that is taken for the uh getting the thickness of 6 by 6 matrix okay so this is a, you can see the results now this is for g2 pp now in this case it was uh you can see at the top the top displacement for the round 364 mm for the apply loading of here we assume that because of the wind loading was quite large loading was assume around 1000 kN acting on the horizontal directions in x direction and because of that the displacement is around 364 mm here okay of course it was hypothetical uh, loading maybe okay. that we are corrected in next study in the next study we have done it for actual wind loading for a particular and then we have done it So this was 364, but when we do it with for fixed space, it is 364. But when we assuming 
uh, supported on the pile foundations due to PP. So it was 432 millimeter with linear behavior and 448 with non-linear behavior. So increase was around 18% and here increase was around 23%. Similarly, for G2PS, G2PS a little bit steeper. Uh, increase, it was 12%, and for nonlinear increase was around 19%. For G3PP, three piles in parallel, the increase was around 17%, and for nonlinear increase was around 15%. For G3PS, uh, increase was 11.6% to pile in series and for long linear it is 13.8%. When we go with 2 by 2, increase was 13.94% and for long linear it was 17.93%, around 18%. Okay. So, so this is the results with three by three. This was done for stressing of 2D. So you can clearly see the effect. Okay. But when we are going for a wider spacing, we can see the effect, uh, see the effect is reduced. So this was done for pile spacing of 2D. So when we go for pile spacing of 7D, uh, we can see that now, now 364 coming out to be 427. So this was 427, this was 432. Okay. And increase was 18.69%. And now it is only 17.5%. So when we are going for the pressing of 70, that is reduced. So it comes down to be 17.5. Similarly, we can see for G2PS, it is coming to be 19.82% and 17.67. G3PP, 15.5, 14%. G3PS, and then 3 by 3. Okay. So you can see that for 70 spacing, uh, more or less, there is a reduction in the top displacement. These are for displacement at all the three levels we can see here. So 364 at the top story, then at the second uh, story level, it goes to 94. This is the first floor slab, so 162, and this is the bottom zero. Okay. So you can see that the bottom slabs are moving by around 10 mm to 12 mm. Okay. But the top, the effect is quite considerable. So as we are going, so we can see that with the story height, the effect of SSI is increasing. So if we are going for three-story or four-story, the effect of SSI will be more. So for uh, stuck high-rise buildings, the effect of SSI is a must because that is cannot be neglected. Maybe for small structure can be neglected, but for high-rise building, it is quite considerable. Now here we are comparing the bending moments. Okay. Okay, that is the, this is the last slide. Okay. So for bending moments, uh, what we can do is uh, we have done it. Uh, compare the maximum positive bending moments in uh, beams B1 to B6. Okay. And because of symmetry, others will be same. So we have done it giving the bending moments in B1 to B6. So first we are giving it for fixed base. So my bending moment was order of 199, 290, 529, 676, 861, and 1106. So B6 was having the maximum bending moment. Okay. And this bending moment was increased to uh, 2.82% only. So this was uh, bending moments in the beams. Basically, I forgot to give you the bending moments in the column, basically. The bending moments in the column will be much affected, okay? If possible, I will try to share that uh, table with you, okay? So, bending moments in beams are not much affected here because they are corresponding to vertical load and horizontal load is uh, mainly responsible for SSI effect and that is not affecting much. Bending moments were increased by 3.2 to 3.72%. I will just try to share the table, uh, but I have to close the slide for this, okay? So with this study, let us give me one minute.
let me share the table for uh, effect on the column. Just give me one minute. In one minute, I will share, able to share you. Just I want to forget to mention that for. Here, in this case of boundary analysis, we have assumed on this steel criteria. Okay, to model the nonlinear behavior of pile foundation, soil was assumed to be nonlinear and modeled by on this steel criteria. So, excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah. Did you share the table? Actually, it's not I, visible. I'm here. sharing. I'm sharing. Just opening the file. Okay. Just okay. Okay. Sir. I, thought, I thought. I thought you have shared it. Okay. No. 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 Just. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is the many moments in column. Okay. And. Uh, okay. I will share it now. Yeah, do you able to see now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can okay, see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now we can see the effect on the columns now. Instead of in place of bin, the effect was not maybe around three to five percent only. But in the case of column, we can see the effect now. Okay. Uh, either there may be reduction at some place, there may be increases at some place. But uh, you can see that this is the, the column maximum moments in the columns. Okay, and. You can see the effect now. Maybe they are changed. Changes is quite significant now. Somewhere it is nine percent, thirty percent over here. Okay, so we can see that the influence on the column is quite considerable on the bending moments. So the tune of maximum even thirty percent also. Okay, it can vary with this column position. Maybe it vary it is at the first story, second story, or third story also. But more or less, you can see that maybe the column C six. Uh, in this case, the bending moments are uh, affected by at least thirty percent change. Obviously, here they are reduced. Okay. So, in the on the bending moments were affected by thirty percent. Okay. And these are negative bending moments. Okay. Now, negative bending moments are increased here. Okay. They are increased by uh, maybe around eighteen. 18 to 19 percent, and here it was increased by 25 percent. Okay, so you can see that in this case, this is the table for many moments, negative many moments on the columns, and you can see that these are now roughly increased by a maximum of around 25 percent. Okay, so column C1 is a maximum increase in the bending moment, and that is to the tune of 25 percent, and we are considering the effect of SSI. Or effect of flexible foundations. Okay, I think I can start my video now. Maybe. So thank you for your kind patience. Okay, uh, as far as finishing, I have finished my presentation. 
uh, I just forgot to mention to one thing that in this case, uh, of course, I mentioned it. Uh, we have modeled soil by uh, one basic soil criteria to account for nonunity in the soil medium. Thank you, sir. It was a very valuable, informative lecture on uh, soil structure interaction. And before we start the question session, I would like to share the feedback link. Okay, okay. So, uh, participants, I have uh, shared the feedback link and you can start asking your question session in the chat box. So we have a question, how comparable uh, this analysis with Plaxis? Okay, so actually we are not compared with the Plaxis this because Plaxis that time, uh, it was not possible to model superstructure that time. Okay, but uh, we have done a separate study in pile foundation. Maybe I have discussed that in my uh, last week's section. So that case, the results were comparable. Okay, we have compared our results with Plaxis. Okay. I don't know how it is possible or not, but when we have done, done it that time, it was not possible to model it in the plaxis in the superstructure basically. But maybe latest version of plaxis might be having it. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, in that case, actually, we have done it uh, for length up to six meters also, but that was only a uh, single story, basically. In that case, it was made only for single story. But for the next slides on when we consider G plus two and all, in that case, we have taken uh, pile diameter 600 and the L by D ratio was taken from 10, 15, 20, and 25. Okay. So in the first study, because it was only a single study, so in that case, we cannot go for a pile of maybe uh, pile group combination of 10 meter and so, okay. So that's why we have taken this uh, a different uh, smaller diameter pile, 300 only, and we have done it for uh, lengths of up to six meter we have gone, okay. But in the other studies, maybe I did it for G plus two or G plus three, G plus four. That time we have varied the length of the pile. Basically, in the present study, what we have done was it was a L by D uh, was 25 basically. Whatever result I presented for L by D equal to 25, and diameter of pile was 600. That is <coughs> 60 centimeter. Okay. The first study was right for only for single story only. I forgot to mention that for second study. Uh, although we have varied L by D, but mainly we have done it for one uh, fixed parameters normally. Of course, we have also done it for vector different diameter and soil modulus also. Okay. So we have one more question. Can we determine the percentage shearing by each pile? Uh, pardon, Can sir? Can we determine the percentage of shearing by each pile? 
percentage of here by yeah. each pair that can be done yeah what we have to do is uh, we just take stiffness matrix of the top element of the pile okay and you multiply it by a load vector that will give you the forces and bending moment okay uh, so if you take corresponding uh, first uh, maybe the if it is x direction if you multiply it by k delta k into displacement vector that will give you the load coming on the pile so if there are two piles that will only we have to be do it for the ssi hello sir hello sir sir you are, you are not audible Just multiply hello sir sir you you are not audible हेलो हेलो हां कैन यू हियर मी नाउ हां यस सर यस सर सेक्शन वाज ऑन इन बिटवीन या ओके सर इट इज आई थिंक इट इज बेटर टू डिसेबल योर वीडियो आई थिंक इट्स हिंडरिंग योर ओके 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 आई विल डिसेबल या ओके ओके सर सर वी हैव वन मोर क्वेश्चन ओके हां आई विल इन केस ऑफ इन केस ऑफ हार्ड रॉक स्टेटा फॉर हाई राइज स्ट्रक्चर नॉन लीनियर एनालिसिस पॉसिबल और नॉट is it possible why not uh, but only thing is high rise building will have much more uh, degrees of freedom so it will take time it's possible but so uh, one of the participants asked to share the design example can you please show design, me the design example for first design page design example we have not done it that uh, means i don't have at the moment uh, we have done it for uh, some validation also but not taking actual case okay sorry i don't have any design example to share it with with me okay sir i had done it one for actually raft one uh, with analysis with the raft but at the moment it is not with me so that was not with pile actually it was for raft foundation the actual field problem is so one more question uh, how can we get the formula for stiffness hmm uh stiffness of of... for different structures different structure means um, if it want to you want to say on raft means structure means you are talking about foundation elements as footing uh, what you can say footing combined footing or pile or raft no what we have done is uh, i have explained you if, if suppose there is a pile over there okay so we have to model this pile separately maybe either with spring model or uh, continuum model and then we can apply unit load in the direction uh, x direction and we can find out corresponding its uh, displacement in the respective directions as x y z direction next case apply in y direction they apply in vertical load and get the flexibility matrix basically 
and you can take inverse of the flexibility matrix that will give you the uh, equivalent thickness of foundation element whatever it may be so uh, is it possible for truss footing truss footing truss yeah why not for footing also it is possible we can just model by uh, simple plate over there or maybe either thick plate or thin plate and we can apply the load on it and we can find out uh, corresponding its flexibility matrix over there always possible in fact uh, maybe for truss also if it is only at the ground level maybe uh, so you can go for using bosnik equation also you can try with the bosnik equations or mendelin's equation if it is a homogeneous layer that is more easy if soil properties are uniform we can go with the mendelin's equation and you can get the flexibility matrix for soil you can take inverse of it so one more question uh, is there any technical criteria to model the raft as a thin or thick plate uh it is depends upon the its least dimension and thickness okay so if it is uh, up to b by 10 the thickness is then at least where it is b is least dimension then we can model as a thin plate but if, if it is going than more, more than b by 10 we have to always model it as a thick plate um, uh, would you like to mention something on the basic difference between the moment at the top of the pile in the soil hmm. and pile socketed in the rock pile socketed in the rock i see if it is a long pile then the socketing will not have much effect on the bending moment if small changes will be there okay for long piles obviously for flexible piles there will be there but mainly moment is induced because of the load on the top and mainly because of the fixity between the structure and the pile a rock uh, socketing in the rock we don't have much effect on the moment not as significant as the fixity at the top okay for long piles because normally If you compare the bending moment profile for the pile, uh, most of the bending moment is taking place in the top half, 50%, and the bottom 50%. The bending moments are very small. So even if you are socketing into rock or whether you are keeping it free or floating, it won't change much. Obviously, deformations will affect because of this um, uh, socketing, but not much in the moment. Uh, i think this uh, any more questions participants okay so i think we have not received any questions uh, okay thank you sir thank you sir i think uh, one second okay so i will share my slides afterwards okay maybe i will convert to pdf and i will share it okay. thank you sir thank you for this uh, wonderful lecture I think we can uh, end the session now. Okay. Okay, so uh, we haven't received any more section uh, questions. Uh, okay. I'm in. I'm ending the section, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay